Hey everybody, it's Miss Bell here from the Science Lab and today in this video I'm going to be mentioning all different types of celestial objects. You might think, whoa, what is that word? It's so difficult to pronounce. Celestial. Uh, you gotta really work <laughs> with your mouth to pronounce that correctly. But celestial objects just means any sort of um, object that is in outer space. So it might be a star, it might be a planet, it might be a moon, an asteroid, a meteor. So uh, that's all I'm going to be talking about. So uh, let's get to it. So the first thing I want to talk about as far as our sun goes is it's in the center of our entire solar system. So all of the planets and asteroids um, revolve or orbit around our sun. It is the largest object in our solar system as well. Um, because of its size and how huge it is, it is extremely, extremely dense. Now it's not a solid, there's no solid surface. Instead, it's made out of gases, um, mostly hydrogen and some helium. And um, because the sun is so hot, there's a lot of solar flares that happen kind of on that outer surface, um, even though it's a gas, um, the outer surface of the sun. Now our sun does spin on its axis, which is that imaginary line that runs through um, any sort of object in our solar system, like our planets or our moons, and it um, rotates in a counterclockwise circular motion. Now, because those um, celestial objects like our planets or asteroids um, revolve around the sun, um, they make like a, almost like a circular path going around the sun and they don't just float off into space in whatever direction. They're being pulled toward the um, sun in that circular path because of gravity. Now our sun is considered a star and stars come in different sizes. Tiny, tiny, kind of a medium, large, and then humongous. And our star is actually a medium-sized star. Not only that, but stars come in different colors as well. Red, orange, yellow, white, blue, depending on the temperature of that particular star. Our star is considered a yellow medium sized star and the color depends on um, its temperature. So as the temperature rises, the color is going to change. And there are billions upon billions of stars in the solar system and our sun just happens to be one in a billion. So next up, I'm going to start talking about our planets. We do have eight, and I want to show you kind of those circular pathways that our planets take as they orbit around the sun. Now these circular shapes are going to be different sizes depending on how far away the planet is from the sun. Take, for instance, the planet closest to the sun. That's going to be Mercury. That is only um, 58 million kilometers from the sun. Now, I say only 58 million. That's a huge, huge distance, but it's not as far as our furthest planet, which is number eight, Neptune. So as you can see, I'm just taking a um, dry erase marker and a piece of string that I've already measured and I'm going around almost like the circumference of these different circular um, orbit, orbital pathways around the sun that each planet would take. The planets that are closest to the sun are going to have those smaller circular shapes and then the 
planets that are further away from the sun, they're going to have larger, larger circular pathways. And um, I mentioned the distance of Mercury from the sun, but take, for instance, our last and final um, planet in our solar system, which is Neptune. That's 4.5 billion, yeah, I said it, billion kilometers away from the sun. That's a huge, huge difference than Mercury. Okay, so here is our final model of our solar system. I've already drawn the orbital pathways of each of our eight planets, and you can see the planets closest to the sun have a smaller um, pathway than compared to the planets that go further and further away from the sun. It's going to take you a lot less time to make this circle than it is to make that circle. So, our eight planets are kind of divided into two sections, if you don't already know. One, two, three, four. As you can see, they are on this side of all of my rocks on the table. And then five, six, seven, eight. Those are positioned on that side of my rocks right here. Now, I know these are rocks on the table, but these actually represent asteroids. We would call this the asteroid belt, almost like a belt that you wear around your waist. And these asteroids, I'll talk about in a little bit, but they come in all different uh, shapes and sizes, but they are solid rocks huge that go around and around and around the sun just like our planets and they help kind of divide our planets into the inner planets because they are on the inside of that asteroid belt and our outer planets because these planets um, remain on the outside of this um, asteroid belt. So like I mentioned there are inner planets and outer planets, and they both have characteristics um, of their own. Now, the four inner planets are Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, and they are orbiting on the inside of that asteroid belt. Of course, they're smaller in size when you compare them to the gas giants, um, and they are all solid, solid. Um, they might be made of different materials, but they have a solid surface if you were to walk on it or send a spaceship to go land on that planet. These inner planets have either no moons or very few moons. So it could be zero, one, two, three moons, but it's um, a low, low amount when you compare it to the amount of moons in the outer planet. Uh, these inner planets also don't have rings that go um, around the <laughs> planet. And um, because their orbital pathways are so much closer to the sun, that means they're kind of smaller in size. That means that the planets go around the sun a lot quicker than those outer planets. And talking about outer planets, um, that would be the last four of our planets. So that would be Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And those are going to be found on the outer side of that asteroid belt. We would call these the gas giants because they're made of gas. Um, and because they're made of gas, there's no solid surface. So we couldn't go take a trip to Neptune and hope to walk around on it because there's nothing to land on. It's made out of gas. Of course, they're larger in size when you um, compare it to those four terrestrial or rocky planets that are the inner planets. And there are many, many moons on these outer planets. And some of these planets um, in the outer banks of our solar system have even rings that go around them. 
And the orbital pathways with these um, planets are a lot larger. So because it's so, so much bigger, it's going to take a long <laughs> time to go around the sun to make that um, to make that revolution. So the next thing I want to talk about are asteroids, meteoroids, meteors, and meteorites. Now an asteroid is a solid rocky body that orbits um, around the sun and it might come into contact with other things in space. Um, as it crashes into maybe planets, moons, other asteroids, small chunks of it break off and that's where we get meteoroids. So this is just a smaller piece of this. And both an asteroid and a meteoroid are found on the outer um, areas of our atmosphere of our planet. Now, as a small um, meteoroid makes its way into our atmosphere, it is therefore called a meteor. So it has entered into our atmosphere. And as it enters, that friction like that um, kind of starts burning up this rock and it might have like a glowing visible path. A lot of meteors don't make the journey. They kind of fizzle out and um, are pretty much dead halfway through the atmosphere. But some are lucky. Some make it all the way to Earth and survive that trip through our atmosphere. And when it comes in contact, <laughs> when it comes in contact with our planet, we would call that a meteorite. So it has landed on our planet, on the surface, and it did not fully burn up or vaporize as its um, journey going through the atmosphere. So the meteorite is the same thing as a meteor or a meteoroid, but just a smaller, smaller version. So the last type of celestial object I want to talk about is a comet. Now a comet is made out of dust and ice and um, as it moves around in our solar system it is also following its own orbital pathway. As it gets closer and closer to the sun that heat energy um, affects the comet it will start to warm up and those materials are going to start to kind of boil off of it. So in the center like there would be a big big chunk of ice but as that ice and the dust um, start to have things happen to them it's going to kind of create like a fuzzy um, material around it and we would call that the coma. This cloud um, can be huge, huge in size, but that's just all of that dust being heated and all of that ice um, being heated up and vaporized into gas. And as a comet um, gets closer and closer to the sun, it's going to create uh, what we call a tail. So the solar winds from the sun are going to push all of that heated dust and that vaporized gas away from 
the comet itself, like that um, icy nucleus, and it's going to form what we call a tail or a stream of all these gases being pushed away um, from the comet, and kind of it looks like the tails are being pushed away from the sun. So that's all I've got for you guys as far as celestial objects goes. Just remember that means anything that kind of moves and grooves out there in space, whether it be a star, a planet, a moon, an asteroid, a meteor, um, lots and lots to talk about with all those things, but that's all I got. See ya!